Hey, Divine Leader, welcome to this episode on Everyday Enlightenment, how to embody spiritual truths in your daily life without faking it. So if you've been tuning into the podcasts that have been recorded in 2022, the guides and I have been talking a lot about really the descension spiral. I know that there's a lot of talk about the ascension spiral and uh, ascension in general. And as a part of the evolution in consciousness, the descension, the capacity to embody, to actualize, to bring to full fruition, to really live your divine nature, your spiritual nature in your daily life is where it's at from my perspective and what the guides have been talking about as well. And that there really is this ripeness to be accelerating our consciousness, to be accelerating the experience of living as the divine beings that we are. So I'm really looking forward to diving deep in this episode into some how to's into some keys. And before we go into that, it's really important to set the stage of what's meant. Cause I remember like way back in the day when there was a lot of talk about the law of attraction and And I was noticing with some folks in the spiritual community that they just stopped as ising it. They stopped stating things as it is to only be speaking positively, which is, you know, the without faking it part. So it was kind of this, okay, uh, if, if I'm going to attract through this law of attraction, then, then I can no longer say anything that is a slower vibration or that uh, is wrong. And although at the heart of, of why I felt like I was seeing folks do that uh, was well-meaning, like your vibration doesn't lie. So what it's not only what we say, it's also our insides. It's also what we're emanating, what we are embodying, just like we see with the ascended masters and a lot of as well, the the visuals, whether it's Yeshua or uh, Mary Magdalene, that there is this halo, this enlightenment, there's this light that's being emanated. And so you know, there's one exercise that I love in the Council of Light book. If you haven't read it, it's all about manifesting the deepest desires of your soul and goes into the different rays of light. And one of the exercises in the Council of Light book was to, if you are in a slower vibration, uh, to imagine that you're an actor, an actress in a play. And to really give that emotion like five seconds to live it to the fullest. So if you're angry, you're really just uh, allowing yourself to, to, to be in that best uh, actor of anger or sadness or so that the energy gets to move. It doesn't get like, oh, I'm not mad when you're really mad. Uh, it, it gets as is, it gets named, it gets, um, it gets a little bit of airtime, but not a lot because that's really one of the ways to embody more of your spiritual truths and your divine self is to start to experience yourself beyond the filters of your slower vibrational body, mind, and emotions to really be, and I know if you're here, you're, you're already doing this in a lot of ways. And so as I'm setting the stage, I just want to circle back to that without faking it means that it's, yes, you're aspiring to a higher level of consciousness. I'm aspiring to a higher level of consciousness And there's like the walking of 
the talk. It's applied in daily life. And unity consciousness, higher consciousness doesn't compromise. So it's not about uh, deferring or being nice or uh, that's the other part of the not faking it. Like, oh, well, being spiritual or embodying our divine nature means that we're perfect or that we're graceful all the time or that we're nice all the time. And actually, in my experience, there's this, especially now on the Earth Star at this time, there is this real solar feminine fire that is, is a part of embodying our spiritual truths, where when it's time, there's a going to the mat for, uh, for what it is that we know is authentic for us in each and every now moment. So now that I've kind of spiraled into this everyday enlightenment from this, like it's important to as is things, your vibration doesn't lie uh, to, to not be like faking it in the sense of saying everything's great when sometimes there are uh, slower vibrations that just need a little bit of airtime for the energy to move through. Let's, go into a little bit more uh, of what even enlightenment is. And, you know, I was really a little bit surprised when the guides were like, okay, today's topic is everyday enlightenment, because I don't really use the word enlightenment, um, mostly because it, it can seem so out there. And the everyday part of it is is very grounding it's it makes it more accessible and yet usually with the word enlightenment there can be this kind of well in order to be enlightened uh or enlightenments for the ascended masters the enlightenments for someone that maybe is uh only in meditation all the time or an advanced yogi there's this sense of enlightenment being for someone else rather than actually enlightenment, everyday enlightenment is for us. And if we just look at the, the root of the word of light, sometimes the Magdalene say in love and mint, uh, light and love, that there's, it's a faster vibration. There's a lightness, there's a levity, there's a, um, a, a frequency that's moving at the speed of light, or there's, there's, Enlovenment. There's an energy of love that's very inclusive and also moving at a high vibration. And that enlightenment is really also, from my perspective, when we have integrated more of the polarity or the duality of the slower vibrations with the faster vibrations. Because sometimes there can be that like, oh, I'm just going to only hang out in the higher vibrations. And a part of the daily life and living as what Toth and the Council of Light and the guides talk about in divine light activation as a light being incarnate is also really honoring your incarnate self. Okay, so let's kind of chunk this down a little bit. Uh, I love what the Abrahams say that it's like, either you're connected to source or you're in resistance. And to me, that can be a really fun exercise to be applying this everyday enlightenment to a, a day, to a moment, to an hour, to really shine the spotlight on one thing or dedicating the day to one thing, which is to be uh, friction free, which is to be resistance free. And I know that's a way of, of, uh, naming it in a way that's kind of the opposite. Cause what, what are we when we're resistance free? What are we when we're friction free? Well, we're in the flow, we're in a state of neutrality. So also really knowing yourself very well, like what are your go-to ways of resistance, being a resistance. And maybe it's like a, I don't wanna, 
there's this kind of a, something that I see a lot I've seen over the years and I've had myself of this kind of like, I don't want to, maybe there's an activity or something about the physical plane, 3d life that when something comes up, whether it's a responsibility or an activity or something that maybe seems unfun, that one of the ways that resistance can come up is this kind of like, I don't want to. And that can take so much energy. And rather than it, it being about the activity and do you want to do it or don't you want to do it, to really be practicing how many now moments to really embody this resistance-free energy. Now, again, unity consciousness or being in the heart doesn't compromise. So I'm not saying like when it's a real no, like a sacred no, of course, you're still saying no. What I'm talking about is more of that low grade, going through the motions, uh, yet resisting it. The, the guides are, are reminding me of when I did my triathlon uh, and I, it, it was, it was, um, you know, it started with swimming. And so I got in the water and I was swimming so uh, as fast as I could. And, and then, you know, I, I went to get my bike and I put on my helmet and my shoes and I got on the bike and within the first few minutes, my legs were so tired and I kept hearing like, you know, it was a women's triathlon on your left, on your left, on your left, on your left. There were all these women that were just passing me. And so I was biking, 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 biking. And my beloved husband, Friedman, you know, afterwards he was saying like, where is she? What's taking so long? Uh, you know, my friends that were there supporting me. And, you know, but I just kept pushing through. Uh, and then I did the run and, and finished the triathlon. And, and it was like every thousand, one thousandth uh, woman who, who passed the finish line got a diamond necklace. So, you know, that was like one of my reframes was like, okay, I, I wasn't as fast as I had wanted. And yet that it was positioned so that I was one of the ones that, that got this diamond necklace. So Friedemann, after the race, was pushing my bike back to the bike rack, back to the car. And he noticed that my front brake was on. And, uh, and you know, before I had uh, been training that week for the, for the triathlon, you know, it was in Seattle and there's a lot of, of hills and we had been going up and down the hills and it was a new bike. And so I had been having the brake on uh, as we were going down those hills and uh, resisting some of the momentum and, and the speed, the, uh, that speed of light. And then the brake had just gotten stuck and, and I didn't realize it. So there was this low grade resistance the whole time that I was moving forward. Like I, there wasn't a point where I was like, I'm getting off this bike. I'm not doing this bike ride. Uh, I don't think I had the, I don't want to come up. I was just like, Ooh, I must've swam too, too hard, too fast. Uh, so that's another way of, of kind of looking at where is it that we, we may just have the break on where in the form of resistance or in the form of friction, where we're committed to whatever it is that we're doing, whether it's like something we love or prefer or something that we don't, there's this choice that it's, that it's, that it's more important to be moving forward in a way that is in the flow, that's in alignment, that's in coherence, in a state of coherence, rather than the, the push pull that can often happen. So yeah, it feels like that analogy is a really good one. And to just notice like, where is it that you may not realize yet that you've just had the break on uh, in, in a chronic way? So one of the keys to, from my perspective, everyday enlightenment and a way of chunking down because what enlightenment is and what spiritual truths are, there are some universal ones. And then there's also 
you know, what is unique to, to each of us. So one of the ways that I define like being or experience rather than define being in more and more now moments of, of higher vibration of, of an evolved, of living a higher state of consciousness of uh, that enlightenment or in the Egyptian bodies, the Sahu, the fully realized self is stringing together more and more resistant free moments or friction free moments. And that that's a choice. That's a choice because you can choose to move out of resistance. And that's kind of the next thing is to, to just as quickly as possible, just notice if you've put on that resistance a little bit, or you've left source, you've left your center, you've left your, mm, your, your light, your, your love, your signature energy. Um, yeah. And then, you know, two other keys in terms of like how to be an everyday uh, enlightened being. And I know that may sound uh, audacious to, to say, and yet it's important to say each of us have the, I don't even want to call it a capacity, yet the, uh, the, the state of being within us to, to evolve our consciousness. It's, it's our right and our choice and our desire to evolve our consciousness. And it is something that is attainable. And that's one of my other main messages where you can, it, it, enlightenment can be for you, lightening up, being happier, being more peaceful, being more neutral, being more engaged, being more purposeful, being more meaningful, like having more meaningful now moments, being connected, uh, those moments of grace and, and magic of really living from your multidimensional self or your divine self or your higher self, where there is an honoring of the personality of you as an individual of your beautiful uh, mind and the capacity to to feel, to have emotions is, is one of the, the gifts, I believe, of being incarnate, to have those body sensations, to not ignore those. And yet at the same time, to, to recognize that it's not just uh, those three dimensions that you get to experience yourself from. Those are paid attention, just like the five seconds on the stage in the Council of Light book, maybe longer, uh, those aren't ignored yet. Oftentimes there can just be some autopilot tapes that the I don't want us, or it may be, uh, survival mechanisms or patterns. So as we go into a couple more states of being of, of where to come from. So being resistance free is an absence of, of resist, resistance. And one of two of the core uh, ways of being that the guides have really gone into in depth in the body of works that we brought through in my direct partnership with them is really coming from the energy of divine to divine, from a place of equality, from a place of equanimity, peer to peer, heart to heart, light being to light being. So that really is uh, a different come from, because one of the, the side effects, the positive side effects, I remember one time I wrote uh, a, a blog around like, 
the hundred top things I love about hanging out with uh, Toth, Toth and, and the guides. And, you know, so many of them were really around evolving. And, and I feel like this is one of the, the secret sauces of, of what we're up to with our clients. And one of the, the aspects that feels really good about being a part of divine transmissions community and, and being in our programs is that the guides are always seeing us in our totality. And there is this recalibration of relationships where as we forge and form, whether it's uh, uh, through the divine transmissions or the channeling of the guides that I offer, or for those of you as well, who choose to really have your own direct relationship with the guides, or source and or source directly, there's, there's a whole rewiring with that. There's a whole rewiring with that. It's like, just like how I began the conversation around enlightenment may seem like, oh, that's for somebody else who that's all they're doing. You know, you may be going, well, I'm a mom, I have a job or I'm an entrepreneur. Like I'm not just uh, in the temple in this lifetime. And so enlightenment's for someone that is just, that's all that they're up to. And, and what I'm talking about is everyday enlightenment. So it's the same thing when we partner with light beings, when we partner with ourself as a divine being, we get to see, are we putting the divine above ourselves, outside of ourselves? Are, is there like, oh, the, the guides or the ascended masters, uh, the light beings, have more wisdom than we do like and they're they're so um honoring and aligned and always hanging out at what they talk about is the 50 yard line that it is a relationship of equality and that's how it works best without any distortion and at the same time that that may seem like a tall order uh, depending how you've been relating to, to yourself, where there may be that less than or, or more than. So if, if you're new to us, or even if you've been hanging out with us for a while, I highly, 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 we have a couple of ways to kind of get a taste of what we're up to. And this relates to it, but I highly, highly recommend our visionary heart collection. And this is the first of the 22 divine light activation sequence, which is really about being a light being incarnate, activating yourself as a light being incarnate. And the visionary heart really helps to restore that divine to divine and create a revolution in relationships. And it's just, it's, it's been such a game changer for me and, and for our clients. And if you're someone that's done it, uh, you may even want to tune into it again, because it's, it, it's a way, it becomes a way of being and a practice that's deepened into. So that come from, coming from the energy of being divine and also uh, divine to divine that others are as well, that you're, you're also recognizing that you are equal to others. So um, not more than or less than that. It's like that namaste. I, 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 I honor the divine within you and, and within me. And that is, I could talk about that for a long time, but that really shifts things as well. And, and then we get to be also in the everyday enlightenment, opening up to just like I really feel and sense with the guides with us, be connecting to others in their totality. I, I remember when I was doing the Divine Light Activation live in France, in groups, like one of the exercises, because sometimes groups come together because there's a common theme, there's things that everyone comes together to, to accomplish. And sometimes groups come together because there's unresolved energies or 
someone in the group reminds and facilitates uh, an energy that may not have been fully completed from earlier in life or uh, relationship echoes. And in this particular group, it was quite diverse. And there was some uh, always in everyone being respectful, yet there was some stuff coming up in the group. And, and Toth was saying, okay, for the rest of the time, the invitation is to really be interacting with one another as light being to light being. And there's such a, a spaciousness that opens up with that. There's such a, a really amazing way of when you're, you're saying, okay, I'm going to relate to myself as an enlightened being, you know, that the Egyptian bodies, the Sahu, the fully realized self, it already exists. Like you're already enlightened. It's just be, being in vibrational proximity with it. And then also really holding that space and connecting to others as their divine selves as well. And then so much more magic gets to happen, especially sometimes when there are relationships that get in ruts or you, you, uh, maybe there's someone and they always give you a facet of them that isn't really the one that you would love to be interacting with. It just opens up a whole other thing. And so the second kind of how to be in that everyday enlightenment is also our second uh, kind of a la carte activation from the Magdalene Codes of Love, which is the birthright of love, uh, code of love. Uh, the, the latest version of that was all focused around um, 5D time or 5D time masterclass. And the birthright of love is one of the 20 um, codes of love in, in our Magdalene Wealth Codes program. And that's another way to really experience everyday enlightenment. Because the birthright of love is that love is a birthright. And when you really have that running in your system, then there's nothing to prove. There's nobody more worthy than another. Just all of that duality stuff that creates resistance, that creates friction, that's a distraction, just falls away. So I really invite you to check out, and we'll put the links here in the show notes, to assist you in your everyday enlightenment, the Visionary Heart Collection, and the 5D Time Masterclass, the Birthright of Love, uh, Magdalene Codes, and, and those can be ways to really be accelerating your everyday enlightenment. So I'm just going to take a moment here to tune in, see if there's anything else that wants to come forward in particular that I may not have tuned into. Yeah, it feels like the guides will come in here just for a couple of minutes as we're wrapping up. Hello, dear ones. This is Toth Sashat, the Council of Light, and many beings of light and love moving more into the forefront of this divine transmission. We wanted to add that enlightenment is experienced in the small moments, in the moments of your daily life. It is about bringing more light into your daily activities, whether they may seem magical or they may seem mundane, where they are ones that you experience again and again, and in addition to experiencing enlightenment in the small moments, we would also invite you to open up your idea of what are enlightening activities and what are not enlightening activities or ways of being 
to expand them to include all that there is because you may have had in the past the idea of you are experiencing your enlightened self when you are in meditation and not when you are washing your car or you are experiencing enlightenment when you are particularly peaceful and not when you are uh, in, in a, a, a situation where there may be conflict with, uh, around you or with others. Daily and every day enlightenment is about bringing those spiritual truths that you know into the smallest moments, into that which is your preferred and unpreferred experiences. So we would invite you as well, if you choose, to really take this exercise, this uh, invitation that was shared to heart, to notice how many now moments of resistance free, small moments you can be stringing together, not in a competitive way, yet in an explorative way. And when you begin to notice that you've had an hour without any resistance or a whole day or a whole week, there's another pocket of consciousness that then begins to be accessible, which is experiencing more of your divine self. And so we will complete here, acknowledging you for choosing to tune in to this Everyday Enlightenment episode and for your contribution for this is in response to your asking and your calling. All is light and love, and we are all.